52 weeks in a year. We have two main church services a year. So, you know, up to 104 times a year plus special occasions, I stand behind this pulpit, or somebody does, and we open God's Word, and we study, and we do it faithfully, don't we? And we enjoy it, and we, we love God's Word, and, and we just dig into it. We talk about what it means and how to apply it. But tonight, we're going to do something different. In fact, this is probably the first time I've ever stood in this pulpit and spoken without a Bible and without a Bible study. And you're probably going, well, we're at church, PR. We're supposed to study the Bible. What do we just, I want you to bear with me for a minute. Because what we're going to do tonight is really kind of a, an incognito Bible study. It's, it's a Bible study about a Bible study, if that makes sense. Thanksgiving Day tomorrow, um, you know, this is an American holiday. This is not a, a worldwide holiday. This is not what we would call a biblical holiday. Thanksgiving is a, a holiday that's, you know, it's, it's kind of, uh, I'm, I'm kind of lost for the word. We celebrate it here in America, but it's not celebrated around the world. It's kind of a regional holiday. And oftentimes we don't think about things like that. Like tomorrow when you guys are pigging out on turkey, you're thinking everybody around the world is probably enjoying this right now, right? But it's not. It, this is an American holiday. And because it's an American holiday, every American family inevitably develops Thanksgiving traditions that are passed down from generation to generation. So how many of you who have your own household right now celebrate Thanksgiving in a very similar way that your parents or your in-laws celebrated it? Yeah, we, we, we love tradition, don't we? And there is absolutely nothing wrong with tradition as long as the traditions that we're following don't take us away from the real reason behind a holiday. And um, I hope I don't get myself in trouble with this next one, but when we were raising children, we were not legalistic about the Santa Claus thing. You know, there are some people who will say, Santa is just Satan spelled differently, right? And, <laughs> and you know, we, we were not like that. We did not teach our children that Santa Claus was anything other than the Christmas clown, so to speak. We didn't make a great big deal of it. And um, we also didn't want our kids going and saying things to other children that their parents hadn't yet told them. I, I don't have the right to press my personal convictions on another family through my children. Does that make sense? So if my kids go to another kid at church and says, oh, so you guys do the Santa Claus thing? Well, you know there is no such thing as Santa Claus. And it's just, I, we can't do that to each other. We, we all have a responsibility of raising our family and being careful how we interact with other people and things like that. So what I'm getting at is that when we celebrated Christmas in our home, it always was about Jesus. If any, when we went to my relatives and my relatives had somebody dress up as Santa Claus and bring presents to all the little kids, we didn't quench that during the family Christmas party. On the drive home, we reminded our kids that Christmas is about the birth of Jesus and that many people celebrate the Santa Claus thing, but you know, we had told our kids who the Santa Claus really was. I sure hope I didn't just ruin it for anybody in this room. Everybody knows, right, I'm looking at all the adults. You guys are okay with there's no Santa Claus. You know that, right? I remember when I found that out, about 2014, my life was crushed. No, not really. I really was. When my sister finally broke the news to me, I was about six years old. You know, there is no Santa Claus. I was like, whoa, right? Tradition is good as long as it doesn't take us away from the real reason that we're celebrating something. And so tonight, um, I want to talk a little bit about the beginning of this tradition called Thanksgiving Day in this great country of ours, the United States of America. And after I do this, I'm going to open up the pulpit and I'll just give a few ground rules for tonight. No preaching. That's my job. If you want to come up, I want people to share testimonies about God's goodness, about thanksgiving, reasons for giving thanks. You can share a testimony of what God is doing. You could share a story of something you plan to give thanks for in the future if you're in a season right now where it doesn't look like you're going to be giving thanks, but you believe you're going to in the future. Share that story. We'll all rejoice with you. We'll pray with you. If anybody wants to come up here and pray a, a prayer, maybe led by what we talk about tonight. 
that it's all good. The, the thing is, is that this is a night of rejoicing and glorifying God. So just a few ground rules. But I'm going to spend a few minutes sharing a few historical facts that we might want to consider as a church and as families as we move forward in developing our Thanksgiving Day traditions. And so after tonight, you may modify your Thanksgiving Day traditions based on, on what we learn tonight. So most people know the story of 1621 when the Plymouth colonists and the Wampanoag Indians shared an autumn feast. We all know the story, right? These colonists at Plymouth had made uh, an agreement with the, the Wampanoag Indians that they would protect each other and you know the, the Indians were teaching the the colonists how to farm this kind of land which was new to them and it, and it was a good relationship and when they took their first harvest they got together and they had what many people believe was the first Thanksgiving celebration in America but it wasn't if you do a little bit of homework you find out that people on this continent had been having celebrations thanking God for his provision long before the Europeans came and settled North America. People for generations before that would gather and they would give God thanks for his goodness during harvest time and during other times. Thanksgiving Day as we know it was birthed when an 18th century congressman named Elias Boudinot introduced a resolution urging the President of the United States to recommend to the American people a day of public prayer and thanksgiving. Public prayer and thanksgiving. And so this congressman, he got a, a great deal of opposition from another group of congressmen and there was all this going back and forth and one group of congressmen were concerned that this violated the the um, law of church and state because this was going to be a religious activity and finally the president just forged ahead and it was on October 3rd 1789 that President George Washington made the following proclamation and, and what we're doing tonight instead of a Bible study is we're going to read through George Washington's proclamation to the American people. This is what he said to the Americans when Thanksgiving Day, as we know it, was instituted into this nation. And he goes through, and, and as you'll see in a minute, he asked the American people that on this one day every year, they would do some very specific things. And it wasn't college football. But that's okay if you watch college football or NFL. But what's more important is that the spirit and even the specifics of what we look at tonight be included in our Thanksgiving celebrations. This is going to knock your socks off if you've never read this before. This is available. Um, I found this on the internet, but I've read this in printed books before. But ever since the internet came along, I own so many less printed books because it's so much easier just to go out and grab it off the internet. But check this out. We're going to put this bit by bit up on the screen. October 3rd, 1789, President George Washington made this proclamation. I'm sorry that's so small. He says, whereas it is the duty of all nations to acknowledge the providence of Almighty God, to obey His will, to be grateful for His benefits, and humbly to implore his protection and favor and whereas both houses of Congress has by their, have by their joint committee requested me to recommend to the people of the United States a day of public thanksgiving and prayer to be observed by acknowledging with grateful hearts the many signal which means outstanding favors of the Almighty God especially by affording them to an opportunity peaceably to establish a form of government for their safety and happiness. Now therefore, I do recommend and assign Thursday, the 26th, of no the 26th day of November, next, to be devoted to the people of these United States the service of the great and glorious being 
who is the beneficent author of all the good that was, that is, or that will be. Now, before I comment on this, and I, I have comments on every section, I want to remind you, and I, I think I'm sharing a personal opinion, but I think this is a, a well received and, and a very popular position, a challenged position. But it is my opinion, as I've studied history, that when the men got together to write the Constitution of the United States, that something very supernatural happened. Now, this has been very challenged, and I'm not going to argue with anybody, because neither of us were there. But it's my personal opinion, having read and having studied, I believe that God spoke to those men. I believe that those men prayed, those men sought the Lord, and when the Constitution of the United States was put together, I believe that God's hand was on that. Because He was birthing a nation that was going to do something very, 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 very specific in God's eternal plan. I just want you to think about who we are as a nation, even today. Regardless of what they say, we are not a post-Christian nation. We are a nation if you go around this nation, especially here in the South, there's a church on every corner, isn't there? And every Sunday and Wednesday and multiple times throughout the week, those buildings are filled with Americans who love Jesus and who are worshiping Jesus and who are spending time being equipped and then going out into this nation. Many going out into the world as missionaries. The statistics tell us that America has sent more missionaries around the world than any other country. And now countries are sending their missionaries here and we need them. We welcome them. But when men like George Washington were forging the beginning of this country, it is my wholehearted opinion that God was behind that. That God was doing amazing things. Let's look at what he said. First of all, it's still up on the screen. This is, this is down towards the end. I took this a little bit out of order. But he set apart November 26th to be a day of public thanksgiving and public prayer. We have since modified that so that it takes place on the last Thursday in November, but it still takes place every year. Much to the chagrin of turkeys all over the nation, right? <laughs> Because did you hear about the two that got pardoned yesterday by the president? I guess they do that every year. One of them was named um, Wing, and the other was Wishbone. And Wishbone and Wing were both pardoned, and so they're both not going to be eaten. They were taken to a, a turkey reserve or something like that. It was just on the news. I guess the president does that every year. But the 26th, of November this year that we're reading about by George Washington was set aside to offer thanksgiving and prayer. Notice who to, uh, up towards the top of the screen. George Washington said, we will set aside a day each year for the people of this great nation to offer thanksgiving to the great and glorious being who is the beneficent author of all the good that was, that is, and that will be. Do men that don't know God write things like that? No, that, th those are words that are coming forth from the heart of a man who knows God. And I want you to notice that he acknowledged at the very beginning of all this that our Heavenly Father isn't just the God of the Americans. He's the God of all nations. And that men from every nation should seek Him. You realize that comes straight out of the book of Acts. Right there. He acknowledged and urged, or no, he urged Americans to have grateful hearts as they remember God's outstanding favor. I can tell you this, there have been Thanksgiving days where we have gathered at my house and we pray and we give thanks to the Lord, but it falls so short of what George Washington asked the American people to do. So tomorrow, before you eat and before you start your festivities, would you please just take a couple of minutes and gather everybody and think about everything we'll talk about tonight. Remind everybody that there is a God who is the God of all the nations. Remind everybody as you pray and as you talk that we're to have grateful hearts before the Lord because of his outstanding favor. George Washington urged Americans to thank God for the form of government that we enjoy. A government that was originally formed to provide safety and to allow people to pursue happiness. Now I don't want to get into a political discussion because I'll get discouraged. 
because our nation has slipped. The Constitution isn't even a guidebook anymore for a lot of our politicians. But George Washington said to the American people in these early days of this great nation, he said, let us thank God for the Constitution that He has given to us to live by because it does two things. It protects us, and He meant it protects us as Christians. And then He said, it assures us to be able to pursue happiness. And, and you know, that's something that I'm really thankful for. You realize in America, you can work hard and you can pursue happiness. Unfortunately, some people are working hard and pursuing happiness in avenues that we probably as Christians wouldn't approve of. And that's one of the things about a constitution like ours is that it gives us religious freedom, it gives us the freedom to pursue the things we want to do, but it also gives people who don't believe in God the freedom to pursue things they want to do. Let's go to the next section. Listen to what George Washington said next. He said that we all may then unite in rendering unto him our sincere and humble thanks for his kind care and protection of the people of this country previous to their becoming a nation for the signal, again that means outstanding and manifold mercies and the favorable interpositions of his providence which we experienced in the course and conclusion of the late war for the great degree of tranquility, union, and plenty which we have since enjoyed for the peaceable and rational manner in which we have been enabled to establish constitutions of government for our safety and happiness, and particularly the national one now lately instituted for the civil and religious liberty with which we are blessed. And I'll sum all of this up in just a couple of quick sentences. Washington, as he was saying this, was asking you and I to pray in such a way that, that we say to God, hey God, we see your hand in establishing this nation. Before we became a nation, we see that you sustained the people here and you were leading the people here and you were orchestrating this plan that culminated in, in what we are now, which is a new and a God-fearing nation. And then he says, Lord, we also acknowledge that your hand gave us victory as we fought for our independence. And now we've obtained the liberty to worship you according to your word rather than according to the rules of the state church in the country that we came from. So as we're having Thanksgiving tomorrow, I wonder if we shouldn't take a couple of minutes and just thank God for the fact that hundreds of years ago and hundreds of years before that, he had a plan to create a nation called the United States of America that one day you and I would live in that would afford us the freedoms of worship to be able to pursue worshiping God according to His Word and not according to what the state church in England and other places was pressing upon people. I tell you what, I love the freedom to be able to open the Bible and say this is how God says we're supposed to do church rather than, well, we'd like to do it God's way, but, you know, the head of the church, not Jesus, but the head of the church here on earth will come and remove our place if we do that. And so George Washington just says, listen folks, as you're praying and giving thanks on Thanksgiving Day, don't forget to thank God for this great nation which he has created. Because God birthed this nation. And what that tells me is that we need as a nation to get back to focusing everything we do on honoring God because he's been so good to us. George Washington goes on and he says, and the means we have of acquiring and diffusing useful knowledge, and in general for all the great and various favors which he hath been pleased to confer upon us, and also that we may then unite in most humbly offering our prayers and supplications to the great Lord and ruler of nations, and beseech him to pardon our national and other transgressions. This might be my favorite part. This might be my favorite part of George Washington's proclamation when he called us to celebrate Thanksgiving. He implored Americans to thank God for the knowledge that they were 
gaining in various realms. That's interesting. Look at the top of the screen. And the means we have of acquiring and diffusing useful knowledge. It was a time when, when mankind was growing in our knowledge. It's a time when mankind was growing in science and things of this nature. And George Washington says, listen, let's pray that we would be a nation that would understand that God is giving us knowledge about the world we live in and how to use it to bring maybe, you know, medical improvements and business and industry and all this because we're a growing nation and we need these things. And he says, let's not forget to thank God for that. And let's then use that knowledge that he gives us to honor him and to care for people. And then George Washington goes on and notice this. He thanked God for the various favors bestowed upon us. In other words, he says, Americans, look around you. Look at how prosperous we are. Look at the amazing opportunities that God has given us and don't take that for granted. Thank God. But then I want you to notice the next thing he said. I'm going to read it again. He says, and also that we may then unite in most humbly offering our prayers and supplications to the great Lord and ruler of nations and beseech him to pardon our national and other transgressions. A transgression is a willing sin. A transgression, okay? It's not just missing the mark. It, it's where there is a clear posted line and we transgress. We trespass. And so he's saying, Americans, as you celebrate the Thanksgiving holiday, how about we gather in a spirit of unity and humility and we begin to confess our sin to the Lord. We would confess our individual personal sin and we would confess the sin of our nation that may one day lead God to judge us as a nation as he judged ancient Israel and the Canaanites and the Philistines and all these other nations. George Washington says, we don't want to fall into that class. As we're celebrating Thanksgiving in America, let's not forget that as we approach God in prayer and petition and thanksgiving, it always includes the confession of sin. And I like the way that he pointed out that we were to, trans, uh, we were to um, confess, notice this, national and other transgressions. Personal. And then, two more sections and we'll be done. He says, he goes on and he says, to enable us all, whether in public or private stations, to perform our several and relative duties properly and punctually, to render our national government a blessing to all the people, by constantly being a government of wise, just, and constitutional laws, discreetly and faithfully executed and obeyed, to protect and guide all sovereigns and nations, especially such as have shown kindness to us, and to bless them with good government, peace, and concord. This is really interesting if you look at this. George Washington says to the Americans as they're about to celebrate their first Thanksgiving, he says, as we go into this first day of public prayer and Thanksgiving, I want to urge you as Americans to pray and ask God to first help each and every one of us be individually good citizens. When's the last time you prayed and said, God, just help me to be a good citizen. I want to be a model citizen. You know, we're 21st century Americans. We, we kind of thrive on being rebels and mavericks and on the cutting edge, you know, almost if the line to rebellion is right here, we want our toes right on it because that, that's cool, right? And we're cool. And George Washington says, you know, Americans, as we're thanking God for this amazing country and for this amazing future and for all the blessings, how about we ask God, to help us to be a good citizen. And then he goes on beyond citizens. And he says, those of you who will become a good citizen, he says, how about you join the government? 
and you become involved in politics. And as a God-fearing Christian, you go beyond being a good citizen and you become a member of our government. And notice I'm going to read it again. He says, to perform our several and relative duties properly and punctually to render our national government a blessing to all the people. Now, before I go on, are there any government employees in the room? Just any government employees, I mean, somebody who works for the government. Praise the Lord, I can speak freely. No, I'm totally just joking. But have you ever gone to the motor vehicle division? Kelly and I, um, we, we had to get new driver's licenses a while back. And, you know, I just took everything. I laid it down. The lady worked through it. And I've got my driver's license. Kelly slips her stuff up there. And I promise you, I am not making this up. A switch flipped in this woman's mind. And she looked at my wife before even looking at the paperwork. She made the decision that my wife was not getting a driver's license that day. <laughs> she dug through the paperwork and she said, oh. <laughs> and away we went. Back home to dig through the files. And we found everything she wanted and we came back. We ended up at the same lady. And you know what she said? Oh, I'm sorry. And, and as a Christian man, I humbly prayed. I asked her what she drove, and I sliced her tires on the way into the... No, I totally didn't do that. But, you know, George Washington is saying, if you work at the MVD, and you're already a good citizen, be a good government employee. You want to know why? Because you exist to make people's lives good. And then he says to all the Christian people that live in our nation, he says, do that. Live your life according to justice and follow the constitutional laws and do it discreetly and faithfully. Execute these laws and obey these laws. Why? Because look, we as a nation are called to protect and guide all sovereigns and nations, especially those who have shown kindness to us. George Washington says, we're Americans. We're an example to the rest of the world. So don't take your friends that are visiting from another country to the Greer Motor Vehicle Department. They'll have a totally bad idea of what America is all about. George Washington says, listen, when American people are living their life thankful for God and what he has done, they're going to live a specific way and they are going to be an example to the rest of the world. Why? Because they're lovers of God. Because they're people who worship God. So he urged the government to bless the rest of the world. And I tell you, something sticks out to me. George Washington must have been a really special man. He says, to protect and guide all sovereigns and nations, especially such as have shown kindness to us. Especially meaning that we're going to protect all nations and sovereigns, even if they're not good and kind to us, but we sure appreciate the ones that are. And I think that George Washington would say to us as individuals, hey, Americans, because we're a God-fearing nation, because we're a Christian people, we don't treat people the way they treat us. We treat people the way Jesus taught us. We love our enemies. We repay evil with what? Shout it out. Goodness and kindness and love and all that, whether they deserve it or not. Last thing, this is the last part of George Washington's proclamation to the American people when he called us to start celebrating Thanksgiving. He says this, to promote the knowledge and practice of true religion and virtue and the increase of science among them and us and generally to grant unto all mankind such a degree of temporal prosperity as he alone knows to be best. And then he closes with this. He says, given under my hand at the city of New York, the third day of October in the year of our Lord, 1789. In this last section here, he urged Americans to seek God and to thank God for the privilege of practicing biblical Christianity versus what had been forced upon the people who immigrated from other parts of the world to get away from religious oppression, where, you, where they could say, well, you can be a Christian, but you've got to practice Christianity this way. And the people were saying, but I'm reading my Bible, and I want to practice Christianity the way Jesus said to practice it. And George Washington says, listen, 
part of our role as the American people and as we're celebrating Thanksgiving is to promote the knowledge and the practice of biblical Christianity resulting in, then he says, virtue. That, that we would follow biblical Christianity and it would turn into that virtue that Christians are supposed to live by. And then he goes on and basically says, and that we would use everything that God gives us to generally grant to all mankind such a degree of temporal prosperity as he alone knows to be best. George Washington says, I anticipate that God is going to allow us Americans to live at a level of prosperity that a lot of the world has not known up to this point. You want to know why? Because he wants to bless people. Now, you guys hear me preaching against the prosperity movement all the time, right? Where, where certain preachers will, will say, you know, God wants you healthy and, and wealthy and blessed all the time. That's not what we're talking about here. George Washington said, God's hand is upon this nation, and if we will obey him, God will bless us and we will prosper. He'll teach us to understand science and we'll prosper because of it. He'll teach us to understand all sorts of things and we'll have this level of prosperity that God alone knows is best for us. And he just urged us as Americans to use these things that God gives us to bring about national prosperity and the knowledge of God. And so I don't know what your Thanksgiving Day traditions are. But I have a strong feeling that the Lucero Thanksgiving traditions are going to change a little bit after tonight. I am, I'm fired up. This isn't even the Bible and I'm preaching it. <laughs> because George Washington came before the American people and he said, the God that we call Heavenly Father, the one who sent Jesus, our Savior, and who gave us his Holy Spirit, birthed this nation. He has great plans for this nation. He has great plans for every one of us. So he says on Thanksgiving Day, let's remember to thank him, to submit ourselves to him, to, to ask for his help in living as good Christian citizens. And just, you know, gosh, you know, you, you read it with me. You see what God is doing through George Washington here. And so I have a challenge for you, fathers, husbands, leaders of the home. Examine your Thanksgiving traditions tonight as you're driving home from Calvary Chapel. And just prayerfully ask God what he would have you add right now. But your kids are going to grow up and your relatives are going to be there tomorrow and you want them to be impacted by Thanksgiving 2017 at your house. Take a couple of minutes and just pray with everybody about the things we talked about and see if your Thanksgiving celebration isn't a little bit different tomorrow. So what I want to do now is uh, I want to open up for testimonies. And I'm going to share the first testimony. And it's, it's two-part. The first thing that I want to share as a, a testimony of God's goodness as of late is Phil and I were talking a few minutes ago. And after Ann broke her hip and broke her wrist, she's really been going through a tough time. But they went to the doctor today and Ann's leg is healing. And her wrist is healing a little bit slower, but Anne is mobile, and she's healing, and her spirits are high. And uh, I think a lot of that is because of your prayers. And then the second part of that is I went to the hospital yesterday afternoon, and uh, Terry Voigt had his open-heart surgery. They replaced his valve. They did a five, what is, uh, heck, bypass. They bypassed five arteries in his chest. And um, he was still out, but I got to go in and pray with him and in the midst of praying with him we got to kind of minister to the nurse a little bit who's a believer and Linda's excited about Terry's you know moving forward and this morning Terry was already out of bed sitting in a recliner eating his breakfast amen God is good folks amen. God is so good and so again just real quick just a couple of ground rules our our mic is open. Mike, are we on? Mike, is the mic on? Yes. Okay. So you come up. You have to actually speak into the mic. This doesn't work when you're talking. We can't hear you. But you've got to keep the mic close to your mouth, just like this. And I want, I want us just to share prayer, praise, thanksgiving. We are lifting Jesus high tonight. We are not preaching. There is no hellfire and brimstone. We'll ring the gong on you. Okay. We are spending the rest of this evening for the next 20 minutes 
sharing prayer and praise, thanksgiving, whatever the Lord would lead, and then we're going to take communion. Amen?